Welcome to this video on how we can create automatic train traffic on an EEP model railway simulator layout. We'll use the built-in Lua software, but the train traffic can be created on any layout without writing code yourself. Let's see how this is done. Usually, when you like to make yourself a real model railway, you start with a design and then, of course, we have to build that design. And this is an example of the layout that I had in my house. Um, and then, yeah, we may like to have automatic train control. And for that, there's this program called train controller that takes care of all that. It's fun to work with. I recently moved to a new home and I did not have room for my model lay railway layout anymore. But there is this nice program which is called EEP, Eisenbahn Simulation. Um, and yeah, it is a, a very nifty little program that can simulate a railway, a real one or a model railway. And the process is exactly the same. First we design a layout. I prefer to do that in this program called SCARM because it has a very handy and easy to use user interface. And then we can build the layout, but now not a real on a physical table, but on a computer in EEP. And now the trouble starts. Uh, I like to automate the train traffic just like on a real model railway layout. But yeah, EEP does not uh, comprise that train controller software. Uh, you have to figure out yourself how to do this. But luckily there is a software built in which is called Lua and we can write Lua code. But this is what I try to achieve, automatic train traffic with this Lua code. To write this code, I set myself a couple of additional goals. Uh, so let's have a look. Here we see the layout and we see trains are happily driving around, fully automatic. The first goal, obviously, well, is this automatic traffic. Trains should drive from block to block and Lua should take care of deciding where they go and then to switch the necessary turnouts and switch the signals. And that's all perfectly nice. Next point, it should be possible to specify which trains are allowed in which blocks. For instance, here we have a railway station and I thought it yeah, should be possible to say a passenger train should always go to track one and a cargo train maybe should always go to track two. Those kinds of decisions should be possible to make in an easy way, of course. Then also it should be possible to define stop times for a train in a block. Uh, there are blocks like the blocks over here where you want the traffic to move on whenever they can, when the route ahead is free. But there's also this railway station and yeah, we might want a train to stop there for a certain time uh, yeah, to load passengers. Let's have a look at this orange passenger train that is just arriving. I'm 100% certain even though the route ahead is free it is going to stop because I gave it a stop time. And then uh, I also wanted to, it to be possible to have individual on off switches for every train. On this layout there are seven trains driving around and over here we see a row of switches and I can switch uh, a couple of trains off. And that means that they will now make, they finish their current route, but then they enter a red signal and they will not move on anymore from that red signal. 
Mm, an important specification point is that I wanted the software to be 100% the same for any layout, no matter if you have a small, a medium, a large layout, any layout uh, should be able to be controlled by the same software without rewriting the code. The only thing needed, and that's the final specification point, is to define the layout in a simple way by filling tables with data. And yeah, we can already guess what kind of data is needed. We need to know, we need to tell Lua uh, which trains there are. Uh, we need to tell Lua which blocks we have. We need to tell Lua the numbers of all the turnouts that we have and also the numbers of all the signals in the blocks. And we see a row of signals over here, which are I call memory signals. They uh, show us where a train is and uh, these numbers must be known. But that's all we have to enter. The software stays exactly the same. Let's have a look at a simple example to see how to fill these tables and actually how easy it is to do this. This is the layout we are going to automate in this video. In the next video I plan to add a second train and another block. And in the third video we will add a block that has two-way traffic. In the fourth video we are going to add a couple of dead end blocks and then in the fifth and final video we will see how we can do this complete layout that we just saw. Ok so here we have the layout we want to automate in EEP. And well the first step with the automatic train traffic is to decide on which blocks we like to have. And for this specific layout it seems logical to have three blocks uh, arranged like this. And in deciding uh, on the blocks um, there's just one rule to adhere to and that is that turnouts can never be a part of a block. Turnouts always are uh, on the route between two blocks. That's the only rule for deciding on the blocks. Here we have the blocks translated in EEP. What does it mean that we have a block? Well, every block at it end, its end it has a signal. And we see here blocks 1 and 2 and at the end of these blocks I placed a signal. Uh, we also have block 3 that is here at uh, the top and the signal is hidden under this diagram but there is a signal there too. So that took care of the signals. Uh, obviously we have two turnouts, number one and number two. They will, uh, those numbers will be um, important also. And we need to know uh, what is uh, main and what is branch of these turnouts, which we can see if we right click them. Then we have uh, what I call the memory signals. Every block gets not only a track signal but it also gets a memory signal uh, like over here. We have the blocks 1 and 2 and then block 3. Then there is a main switch and there is one signal which will act as a switch for the train to switch this train on and off. We have only one train so that that uh, uh, switch is not really doing anything in this layout but if you have a layout with multiple trains it can come in handy to have a separate on off switch per train. Then we see these uh, sensors over here. Well luckily there are not uh, too many of those, exactly the same amount as we have blocks, just three, uh, because these are the block entry signals. And this block entry signal over here, block one, belongs to this uh, memory signal number one. This signal uh, sensor in block two belongs to 
this memory signal 2 and this entry sensor 3 belongs to memory signal 3 and what they do is they switch the memory signal to red and that's all that we need to do in the 2D preparation now we can go to Lua and fill the data tables with this info so this is what we now have and unfortunately in EEP quite often these numbers that we now need to fill our tables are very hard to read uh, so for this video I uh, prepared this little uh, sheet that shows the numbers more clearly this is what EEP the numbers EEP created automatically we cannot choose the uh, signal numbers EEP creates those numbers for us um, well let's have a look what tables we need to fill with what numbers here we have the Lua code open in notepad plus plus we need to define this layout in the tables that are at the very top of the code and the first line that we are going to work on is the train in this layout we have only one train so there's only one line a table train number one it gets a name and that can be any text you like the only purpose of this train name is for the printout on the lua event screen there is no other use for it than that every train gets its own individual on off switch in this layout that number of the switch is four as we can see here on the left then uh, the route is zero that is by default we don't have to change any on this and the block yeah currently it is two but that can depend we are going to fill this in when we place the first train on the track let's go to the uh, allowed blocks this is um, uh, for train number one uh, we have three blocks and uh, the code is as follows if we would fill in a zero that would mean this train is not allowed in that block if we fill in a one then that means the train is allowed but it does not have a stop time if we fill in a number larger than one the train is allowed in that block and it has a stop time the time uh, has to include the driving time from the entry sensor to the signal so maybe you first have to test that a little or even use a stopwatch and then add the desired stop time let's put 20 in block 1 and nothing in block 2 so we will be able to see the difference um, then we get a line that talks about two-way blocks in this layout we don't have any two-way blocks so we fill in all zeros in video 3 we'll have an example of two-way blocks then we simply fill in the numbers of the signals of the three blocks in this case 8 9 and 10 and we also have these memory signals the the, the little LED lights on our control panel and for this layout they have the numbers 5 6 and 7 that's all quite straightforward no abacadabra here now we have to start thinking a little bit uh, we have to define the possible routes and for this layout if a train is in block 1 yeah there's only one block it can go to which is block number 3 and to get there uh, turnout number two has to be put on straight well not really because it uh, it runs the turnout over in the opposite direction so it will change the turnout automatically uh, all by itself but it looks better if you if you have a nice camera work uh, going on that your layout uh, switches in the correct position on beforehand of course uh, let's go to route number two from block 2 to block 3 the only turn out we have to switch is number 2 and it has to be on branch then we are in block 3 and we can return to block 1 for that we have to switch turn out 1 on straight 
uh, main and then we uh, can also go from block 3 to block 2 and for that we have to put turnout 1 on branch. That's all, we have 4 routes on this mini layout. On larger layouts you can quickly have uh, 12, 20 or even more routes. It's up to you which routes you want to define. Um, okay, then we have this little uh, quirk of EEP. There are signals that have uh, as the red state uh, status number one and for green number two. But there unfortunately are also signals which have that uh, just opposite. And uh, with Lua, yeah, we have to make a choice. So we cannot use different types of signals if they have the different uh, states. Uh, we have to define the state. We can use um, a, a red is one and green is two or vice versa, but they need to be the same on the entire layout. You can make a different choice for the memory signals and also a different choice for the main switch. And then finally, we have the number of the main switch in our case, that is number three. Um, well, this is actually it. Let's go drive a train. Oh, well, uh, before we can, of course, we have to copy and paste the entire code. So we do control A and then control C, and then we have the complete code in our clipboard. Now we go over to EEP and we open the Lua editor via this little icon over here at the top. And now we uh, do the same, Control A to select everything, uh, if there is anything, and then Control C to paste the code that we just copied from Notepad. Now we are going to make this little change. Here is this line which says place train is zero. Well, we need to place a train. Yeah, uh, in my example, I had already placed the train, but just let's suggest that we had not. I make this line one, place train is one. And now uh, I reload the script and what it does, it automatically switches off the main switch and all the individual train switches. Now we can place a train, which we would normally do over here. You select a train and you place it somewhere. Yeah, mine is already there, so for the sake of time, I'm not going to do that. But once you have placed your train, uh, uh, click on that uh, locomotive. Oh, and then and then in automatic driving mode, give it a speed. But before you do, uh, please take care. It is going to run to a red signal and the pre-signal, uh, these signals don't show a pre-signal, but it will be somewhere over here. Uh, your train must be before that pre-signal because we want it to stop, of course, at this red signal. Let's give this train a speed of 30. There it goes. It will drive to the signal and stop there. And then we know that our train, the first train that we placed on this layout in initialization mode, so to speak, is in block number three, because that was the number of this block. So now we go back to uh, the Lua code. Uh, we fill in the block number of this train number one. If you have eight trains, then of course you have eight lines and you have to do this eight times for every train. This train is in block three. Uh, I leave this place trains is one over here and reload it. Now it has loaded and yeah, you can see, maybe you saw that this uh, LED light of block 3 turned red. It now knows that the train is in block 3 and it also says so over here. Block 3 has the train number 1 called steam. It also says please make your code 0 again. So let's do that. There we go. Uh, place trains is 0. We have, we f oh, we have finished uh, placing all our trains. We don't change anything else, only deadline, reload the script, and now we are in driving mode. Look what happened over here. It says, yeah, I found a, a train uh, in block three. It arrived there uh, and uh, it stopped time one second and the main switch is off. That is repeated every five seconds to remind us of that. Let me press the shift key and then left click that main switch that turns it on. 
nothing happens because my train switch is still off but now the moment of truth is there let me press shift and click that also yeah there is my train on the move it says here train number one called steam is going from block three to block one isn't that a beautiful so it will end up in block one if you remember we gave block one a waiting time of 20 seconds well that included the drive time from the sensor which is somewhat here at the start at the entry of the block yeah there it is it uh, saw that it is in the block 20 seconds from now this signal will go on green so yeah let's and it also says over here as you can see steam arrived in block one stop time 20 seconds so we can exactly see what is going on well those 20 seconds are over right now and there it goes let me put that switch off and let's do an example of uh, telling uh, the train where it can and cannot go because that becomes important when you have multiple trains and big stations and you want a cargo train to go on a specific track and the passenger train on another track. That's quite simple and, and super easy to do. Uh, we all only have to change the allowed blocks for every train. So it's going to stop, main switch is off, the train switch is still on, but of course the main switch has priority. Let's go to the Lua code and now say in this allowed line over here that this train is not allowed in block 1 anymore. Just for fun, let's see what happens. Oh, let's keep it clean, a space there. And let's reload this script. It's not allowed in block one. Well, yeah, that, uh, there's only one other choice. It will have to go to block two. Let's see if it does that. A main switch on. Yes, every year it already says this steam train is going from block three to block two. And the way we code it is right now, it will never go back to block one anymore. So that is how you can decide which train goes where. Yeah, I think uh, actually uh, you don't have to change any code. All you have to do is at the top of the uh, listing, uh, put in some numbers of your uh, signals and of course your routes. That is an important part. And then, uh, yeah, everything runs fully automatic and it can be great fun if you have a larger layout with more trains and more routes. Well, oh, now I was too late. The signal is on green already. So if I put this main switch off, it will still drive through again to track two over here, block two. Um, this is good practice if you want to stop EEP, don't just stop. Uh, it is going to save the state it is in, but to, in order to do that uh, consistently and, and, and okay, uh, you have to wait until the train is actually seen here in this block, otherwise uh, 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 things can be a little confused and EEP might not start properly the next time. So let's have a little patience. Let's wait until it's told uh, or until we see over here that it arrived in block two. Yeah, it did. And now EEP knows everything it has to know for the next startup. So we can simply quit, simply stop over here. You don't have to save anything that's all taken care of automatically. Thank you for watching and maybe see you back in video number two where we are going to add uh, a fourth block here and a second train and see how that works out.